I have been waiting potentially years for a good opportunity to actually use the software we're going to be checking out today, and that is Home Assistant. In this video, what we're going to be doing is whipping out a Zima board and installing Home Assistant on it. I picked up one of these guys from Amazon. It is a Sanoff uh, Zigbee 3.0 USB dongle. Plus. And the reason I need this dongle is because the device that we are first going to be setting up in my instance of Home Assistant is using Zigbee, which is a open source protocol that smart devices use to be able to uh, connect to other devices so that way we can have control over them. There are other protocols I could have gone with and actually the blinds I'm going to be doing this with is from a company called Smart Wings. Now they have numerous protocols, they have Matter, Thread, Zigbee, which is what I decided to go with. I watched a couple like comparison videos. I was going back and forth between Zigbee and Z-Wave here. And after doing some research, I did decide on Zigbee. I'm not gonna go too far into that right now. I will link down below to the video that I used to kind of come to that decision for myself. But there's other protocols as well. You can just use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a few others here. But ultimately I do want to use Zigbee for as many of the devices as I can. And one of the really cool things about Home Assistant is you don't have to have a bunch of different applications to actually manage everything. I can set up the Zigbee devices, Wi-Fi devices, Bluetooth devices, a bunch of different things within Home Assistant and just have a central dashboard in place to control everything, set up scripts and automations for my home. Now these shades are really cool and I will be talking about them more in just a moment right after we go ahead and actually install Home Assistant. We head over here to the Home Assistant website. It does a really good job of explaining the different options and ways to go ahead and install it. They do have devices with it preloaded, makes it really easy, obviously the easiest to be specific. Or you can set this on a Raspberry Pi. They have the Home Assistant Yellow, which I believe the video by um, Jeff Gerling, I think he uses this in that video. I, I watched his video before doing all this, so there may be some similarities. I will link to his down below. But if we go down to other hardware, this is my option. It says right here that it is hard and I can vouch that it's really not. There are a couple additional steps. We have options for Droid devices as well as x86-64 machines. That is what the Zima board is, and it's my personal preference to use x86 machines over something like the Raspberry Pi. I just find them easier to work with, more compatibility, and I like the Zima board itself because it's kind of uh, enclosed in a heat sink and it just looks a lot cooler sitting on that cabinet. And it is a little more powerful. It's gonna have a lot more of, um, growth potential compared to a standard Raspberry Pi. And honestly, you get a pretty cheap mini PC that you could use for something like this for almost the exact same cost. And chances are it's gonna have like built-in Wi-Fi, additional IO that might be helpful, things like that. Now, this is the setup process. And again, it's pretty easy. First, you're gonna wanna make sure UEFI is enabled. Uh, depending on your BIOS, the process is gonna be uh, different, but it's generally all within the boot settings. You're going to want to disable secure boot because we're going to be uh, doing this with a, um, it's the first method or the first option here, which if we scroll down here, method one recommended. The best way to do this is to install Ubuntu on a USB drive using something like uh, Etcher or Rufus, or if you're already in Linux, it's uh, really easy just to use GNOME disks. That's probably the best tool to do this with. So just install like the latest Ubuntu desktop onto a USB drive, and you're gonna to want to go ahead and boot into the live environment. For these demo boards in particular, they have eMMC flash storage. I believe it's 32 gigabytes built into it. Now, obviously, depending on your device and whatnot, you are gonna end up wiping the data on the hard drive, so do make sure you back up everything on the device that you plan on installing, uh, what is it, HAOS on Home Assistant OS. So once you go ahead and boot into it, the live environment of Ubuntu, what you're gonna to want to do is download the image. It's right here. From here, download the image. This right here is the download location for uh, Home Assistant OS, which I do believe is just a Debian-based Linux distribution that has everything kind of pre-installed and configured for you, which is nice. And once you have it downloaded within the live environment, you open up GNOME Disks, and then you go to the drive that you plan on installing on, this example right here is a one terabyte disk for the Zima board. It's gonna be that eMMC flash storage that's built into it. Or you could use a little PCIe and add more storage if you'd like to. You select the image, start restoring from that image onto the drive that you plan on installing it onto. And really that's about it. You might get some errors. The actual Home Assistant documentation will kind of walk you through that. 
But that's really it. Once it goes ahead and finishes it up, all you need to do is um, restart the system, remove the drive, and you're gonna be booting into Home Assistant. Now I did record the process of me going into the initial boot. I am going to jump to that. But first I kinda wanna talk about the uh, product in which I'm going to first be linking up to it, and that is the Smart Blinds. I got an email from Smart Wings a long time ago asking me if I wanted to check out this product. I couldn't install them in my previous home, but when I moved, I reached out to them again and they were willing to send some over to see how well it would work. So a big thank you to them, that, that's super awesome. So here on their website, I went with the roller shades. They have some other really cool ones. I kind of wanted the zebra shades. They have a really nice effect that goes with it. They have dual shades, which are super expensive, but I went with the roller shades. And I believe I went with this first one right here, the motorized light filtering shade, 70% blackout. So they're cool because you can't see through them, but it still lets a little bit of light in. Now the ordering process, the base price is 179, which is kind of up there, but if you're somebody considering this, that's probably not too bad. I went with the ivory, and there's a couple different mount types, outside or inside. I did the inside mount, which I think looks way better. And within the ordering thing, you have options for the width, height, all the way down to fractional inches here, which you do need to make sure it's absolutely perfect because one, I have uh, one of the blinds right here. This one was supposed to go in the kitchen, but I measured it too small by a couple inches, which sucks. And then the bigger one that goes in my kitchen, I measured it too big by probably like a fraction of an inch. So it is definitely snug. I installed it, it was hard to get it in there and I'm probably actually gonna uninstall it, sand down the edges a little bit and pop it back in there. But for the most part, the installation process is really easy. You just have some brackets, you two screws right up into the frame and then they kind of just slide and pop in. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward and easy process. For me, the installation process takes a little bit longer, especially when you have uh, kids running around, but they make everything fun. <laughs> Going on, we have the motor type. So I kind of already ran through this. This is how you want to connect. So we have the Zigbee. The standard motor just is the multi-channel remote control. I would not recommend that. You're gonna to wanna to get something that has some sort of smart functionality in it. Alexa motor, the Matter motor is pretty expensive. They have HomeKit, Z-Wave. So I think the Zigbee and the Alexa are the cheapest options. Variants decide how it looks. I just went with the uh, kind of flat white square for all of them. And then you have some bottom bar options. You, they have solar panels, which is pretty cool, but I did make a, a little mistake. You have the option to uh, pick what side of the motor is on here. Put the motor on the side in which the window does not move because uh, if you want to use the little solar panel that sticks to the window, you're not gonna want the motor on the side of the window that moves. Very critical error that I made. At least they claim that they last uh, about six months to a year on a charge and it takes a couple hours to charge it up. I just get something like this little portable battery and take it to each blind and charge it throughout a day, no big deal. And if I'm to give just like a little quick review on these things, they are awesome. Even before I got them connected, using the little remote that came with them, they, were, they shipped kind of pre-programmed, so it was really cool to be able to just use that, raise, lower them and all that. Super fun product. So with that, let's cut to the point of me doing the initial connection and getting them into the system. Now I do have experience with a lot of home lab type services and whatnot, but this is my very first time ever in Home Assistant. So this is kind of a, a first impression type thing, which I actually have things to set up. So this is gonna be interesting. Let's create my smart home, starting with our user account. All right, create account, home address. I am not in Amsterdam, but I am going to do this and then proceed. There we go, our address has been added. So share information. Yeah, let's just give them all the data. It makes the product better, right? Let's go next. And we found some compatible devices already. And it looks like Zigbee's working. So I did plug in the little, uh, the dongle, the Zigbee dongle, and it says Zigbee automation. So let's go ahead and just hit finish. See if we can add those blinds. So light, <laughs> it detects my uh, Elgato lights right away. So that's pretty cool. It's, hey, oh, it's taking a minute to turn back on. Uh, okay. Oh, there's one. Oh, <laughs> if I were to actually get this to work properly, that oh, there it goes. So we have kids' bedroom too and living room TV. So it automatically pulled a lot of the uh, Google devices in, which is pretty cool. Uh, how do we add something? So energy mapped, do lists, uh, devices and services discovered. Okay, here we are. 
So we have Synology stuff. Uh, Zigbee, Zigbee Home Automation. Oh, so this is the dongle. So we have one device here, Zigbee Home Automation. Um, Add devices via this device? So searching for Zigbee devices. Now, if it doesn't find any, I might have to move it upstairs where it's closer, because right now I'm in the kind of basement level where my office is. Oh, make sure they're in pairing mode. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, we got a manual. <laughs> there we go. I did this whole song and dance with it uh, by Smart Wings. This is the kitchen one. So there we go. Device is ready to use. Area, I don't have, oh, areas. There's some predefined ones. So that is the kitchen. This is going to be the uh, kitchen shade. There we go, it's on there. So now I have to do this with everything. Okay, <laughs> we'll be back. All right, and there we go. We got our four shades added. Um, it's searching for more, there's gonna be no more. Um, again, not they're not being a save button is kind of uh, disappointing. Or at least like a little thing that says saved to confirm that what I have in there is. Um, just in case, these, let's open this in a new tab. Oh, there it is. Kitchen, living room, bedroom. And we have the up, down, stop, and whatnot. Super freaking sweet. So I think as of for now, this is going to be fine. I'm going to call it quits tonight. It's getting a, a little late. So we will be back tomorrow. All right, hello, it is Brandon in the present once again. Thank you, Brandon, in the past for setting that up for me. This is my current dashboard. Now, this definitely looks a little bit different than uh, it just looked when I initially got the uh, shades installed in here. I've added a couple more devices. We have a uh, Apple TV, we have a printer, some Elgato key lights here. So if I go boop, they, they're, they're gonna turn off, boop, back on. It's, they're working really good now. When I first got them in there, a little eh. We have the shades here, front shade, large shade, and kitchen shade. And of course, don't forget the bedroom shade. And a couple other devices, basically everything here auto-detected. If we go to uh, settings, devices, and services, these are discovered devices that I have yet to properly set up. And these are all my devices. You can see on the overview, I have entity not available cameras. I just disabled those, so you don't see my home. The app is phenomenal. There is a lot of customization and stuff I need to do to get this to actually work and look how I want it to. Now, one thing I was experimenting with last night and something that was kind of disappointing. If we go over here to settings, um, not Home Assistant Cloud, but that's what I'm talking about. Uh, if we go to devices and services, add an integration. I go to something like Amazon. My wife likes to use Amazon a lot for like the voice commands and stuff. Go to Amazon. This needs to be done with their Home Assistant Cloud. So it's like six, bucks a month or something like that. It's not too bad. Honestly, I might end up using it, but I did do an alternative thing, which kind of works. It's a, uh, let's see. If I go back here, add an integration, and I think it is the, it's an emulator? Hue? Yeah, emulated hue. This right here is what I ended up trying to use for this. What it does is it gets devices that aren't being able to be discovered by Amazon or devices within your home assistant that isn't seeing and emulated them as hue lights. Now this in the most basic sense is working fine. I've been able to add my Alexas or add my shades to the Amazon app or the Alexa app and control them and whatnot. The main issue is obviously shades are not going to act exactly like a hue bulb. So if I say shades to 50%, a hue bulb will switch to 50% instantly. The shade is gonna take a lot longer. So, I mean, it works, but then it comes at me with, I'm sorry, this device has no function when it has not. So there's a trade-off there. It's it's kind of hacky. And when I say hacky, you need to actually edit your configuration to be able to do this. So if I go to add-ons, file editor, let's go to the web UI, and we want to screw around with the configurations YAML. So you can see right here, this is emulated hue, and these are the devices that I added. So cover, bedroom shade cover is the bedroom shade. So you do have some options to kind of name it and get them to display how you would like them to. So I have all the shades here. It kind of works, kind of. Made it to 90%. Hmm, that device appears to be malfunctioning.
but I might end up trying out their cloud service to see if that's gonna work better. But just the fact that this is a free option is kind of cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Again, this home is a place that I can actually kind of uh, drill into the wall, install things like that add cameras. I'm in the process of figuring out the uh, light switches or the light dimmers that came with this place, which are actually smart functionality, but they require a hub. So that's gonna be interesting. I probably am gonna do a video on that. Do subscribe because there's gonna be some home assistant stuff coming up. And honestly, out of all of the home lab applications that I have, whether that be sonar, radar, my security suite, backup solutions, things like that, this I can see end up being my absolute favorite definitely daily use application i'm super excited and with all that i do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day anything i mentioned including the blinds the dongle zima board all that will be linked down below if you are interested some of them might be affiliate links so won't cost you nothing but will help out the channel i do appreciate that again have a beautiful day and good bye